Thank you so much, uh, uh, Chair, and thank you to our witness for being with us today. I have a question of clarification. Um, SEMA sanctions not just individuals, but also entities. How, how does this uh, inadmissibility play out with, let's say, an entity which has shareholders? How does that work? Mr. Saint Marseille, I'd ask you to uh, uh, to respond, or if you want to delegate to uh, one of your colleagues, uh, please do so, and just uh, indicate who it's uh, who it's going to be. And whoever uh, answers, um, please indicate who you are. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair, and thank you for the question. So, with respect to um, sanctions against entities, the the uh, the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, nevertheless, would require an individual to be named. I so see. it's only in the event that a sanction is issued against an entity and also an individual that the um, that the uh, inadmissibility would apply. Uh, thank you so much for that answer. I, I understand that. I have a question about, um, and, and I guess you've answered it. The individual who is inadmissible must be named in the sanctions. I was wondering about family members of sanctioned individuals, whether inadmissibility applies to them as well. Uh, yes, I'm happy to take that question. So the with respect to family members, there's already um, provisions in the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act related to inadmissible family members. So we're proposing, uh, or Bill S-8 proposes to align how sanctions and admissibility is treated uh, to align with what already exists in the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act relative to inadmissible family members. Um, so with that, I, I would uh, invite my colleague, uh, Ms. Helen Robertson from IRCC to give a bit more color in terms of how inadmissible family members uh, works in the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act today. Thank you. As Mr. Samase said, there's an existing provision about inadmissibility of family members. Um, in this situation under the regulations, family members are defined as a spouse or a common law partner, a dependent child or a dependent grandchild. And the Act already provides that inadmissible family, a, a family member travelling together with an inadmissible person, such as a sanctioned individual, would also be inadmissible to Canada. In some circumstances, also, if the person is travelling by themselves, but they are a family member of a sanctioned individual, they would also be inadmissible to Canada. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just to add, so all this happening now is a reflection of renumbering. There's no change in policy there. Yep. Thank you. Senator Omidbar, you have another minute if you want to throw in a quick one. You're on mute. I would, yeah, I'd like to know how many sanctioned individuals under SEMA or uh, Magnitsky Act, how many have actually been admitted into Canada? Do we have any evidence? Um, so, yeah, with respect to the Special Economic Measures Act, the current volume of individuals that have been sanctioned, um, and this is data as of May of this year, is uh, 1,858. So of those, because because the SEMA inadmissibility grounds don't perfectly align with uh, IRPA inadmissibility, we do not have data to suggest that, uh, or we don't have data to indicate how many have been admitted because they aren't, uh, if Bill S-8 um, does not reach royal assent, they would not be inadmissible. So we haven't tracked that level of information. Uh, but what I can tell you is with respect to the sanctions generally that exist and that do apply to inadmissibility, every case that we are aware of, um, save one, has been identified abroad by uh, our immigration refugees and citizenship uh, colleagues, and they've been denied uh, visas overseas. So with respect to the inadmissibility framework that exists today, uh, vis-a-vis -vis sanctions, so that's Magnitsky Act sanctions and also the existing multilateral sanctions, they've proven quite effective in denying access to Canada abroad uh, before anyone ever arrives uh, at the border. Th thank thank you. you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator.